Hi designers, welcome to SolidWorks Central. In this tutorial, we'll create a pipe with flange, step by step. We'll use essential tools like projected curve, swept boss base, mirror, fiddler, shell, extruded boss base, and chamfer to model the part. Then finish it with appearances for a professional look. You can find the technical drawing in the description. I recommend new learners try it on your own first. Ready? Let's jump right in and start modeling. First, let's open a sketch on the front plane. Now activate the line tool. Start sketching from the origin. Next, let's select the Smart Dimension tool. Set this line to 32 millimeters. Set the vertical distance from the end point to the origin to 62 millimeters. And this line's horizontal length is 20 millimeters. Now activate the Sketch Fillet tool. Set the fillet radius to 20 millimeters. If you watch the icon next to the cursor, you can right click to complete the command. It's a shortcut. That's all we need for this sketch, so let's exit the sketch. Open a sketch on the right plane. Make the view normal too. Activate the line tool. Switch to the Smart Dimension tool. Set the vertical line length to 62 millimeters. The horizontal line will be 30 millimeters long. Right click, choose select, and that will exit the command. Activate the sketch fillet tool. Keep the fillet radius at 20 millimeters. That's all for this sketch, so exit the sketch. Go to curves and select projected curve. Before opening the command, let me explain. The projected curve tool generates a curve by projecting two different sketches onto each other. It's especially useful when you need accurate guide paths for features such as sweep or loft. Set the projection type to sketch on sketch. Select the sketches. As you can see, the projected curve combines the two sketches to generate a single guide curve. Click OK to confirm. Activate the Swept Boss Base command. In the Profile and Path section, select Circular Profile. Now choose the curve as our path. Set the diameter to 15 millimeters. Click OK to confirm. Click on the curve and choose Hide. Activate the Mirror command. For the Mirror Face plane, select the right plane. Go to the Bodies to Mirror section and select the body. Keep Merge Solids active because we want the result as a single body. Switch to the Fillet command. Set the radius to 5 mm. Select the edge where we want to apply the Fillet. For a smoother transition, let's choose Curvature Continuous instead of Circular in the Profile section. This gives us a more natural flowing blend between the surfaces. Activate the Shell command. Set the thickness to 2 mm. For faces to remove, select the end faces so the part becomes hollow like a pipe. Click OK to confirm. Use Section View to clearly see what the Shell command has done inside the part. Create a sketch on this bottom face. Make the view normal too. 
Select the circular edge of the bottom face. Use Convert Entities to project the circular edge onto the sketch. Select the Circle tool. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Set this diameter to 25 mm. This diameter will be 20 mm. Open the Extruded Boss Base command to explain the Select Contours section. With Select Contours, you don't have to use the entire sketch. You can select only the closed regions you need and apply the feature just to those areas. Set the depth to 4 mm. We've already set the depth to 4 mm and the end condition will remain blind. Just reverse the direction. Click OK to confirm. In the Feature Manager tree, go to the last extruded boss base and click on the sketch. Then, open the Extruded Boss Base command again. Clear the Select Contours box by removing the previous selections. Now, select the closed contours we want. Set the depth to 5 mm. Reverse the direction. In the From section, select Surface Face Plane instead of Sketch Plane. Instead of starting from the Sketch Plane, this option lets us start the extrusion from a selected surface, face or plane. Click OK to confirm. Create a sketch on this face and set the view to Normal to. Select the Straight Slot tool. Use the Smart Dimension tool and set the slot's radius to 13 mm. Hold down Ctrl or Shift, select the two circular edges and use Convert Entities to project them onto the sketch. Select the Centerline tool. Draw a vertical centerline through the middle of the slot. From the Search Commands box, select the Dynamic Mirror Entities tool. Dynamic Mirror Entities lets you draw on one side of a centerline and it automatically creates the same entities on the other side. Select the Circle tool. Now, select the Smart Dimension tool and add dimensions to our circles. Set this circle's diameter to 10 mm. This last circle will have a diameter of 4.5 mm. Switch to the Trim Entities tool. Keep Power Trim active and trim away the parts we don't need. Click OK to confirm. Open the Extruded Boss Base command and select the contours where we want to apply the depth. Switch to the right view. Keep the depth at 5 mm, the end condition will remain blind and only reverse the direction. Select the Fillet command. Keep the radius at 5 mm. Select an edge. When we pick one edge, SolidWorks detects a connected loop. Here it shows connected to start loop, three edges, meaning it found three connected edges we can fill it together. Click OK to confirm. Select the chamfer command. Keep the chamfer type set to angle distance. Set the distance to 1 mm. Select the edges where we want to apply it.
click OK to confirm. Without opening the chamfer command from the menu, we can simply click the edge we want and access chamfer directly from the context toolbar. For this edge, set the distance to 2 mm. Click OK to confirm. And finally, for this edge, set the distance to 3 mm. Click OK to confirm. From the display settings, set tangent edge display to removed to hide the tangent edges and achieve a cleaner look. Yes, we've completed our model, but let's make a final touch to the appearance and scene together. You can also apply the appearance and scene in any way you like. And that's how we've completed our pipe with flange model in SOLIDWORKS. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to SOLIDWORKS Central for more tutorials every week. Got any ideas for future videos? Drop them in the comments below, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.